I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Peabody City Council for Thursday evening, May 9th, 2019. Sorry, but we're about 15 minutes behind the schedule. We'll try to make that up. Um, please join me in a moment to silence. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, liberty, and justice for all. Approval of the record, Mr. President. It's a vote. This meeting is being televised live on Cable Access Channel 9 and is being taped by PBD Access Television and is also being recorded by our city council stenographer. Also, um, for those that may need it, we do have uh, listening devices available. Before we start the meeting, I'd like to just recognize uh, two of Ward One's finest in the audience. We have um, Jody Shaw and her son, Bobby Shaw. Bobby's from, Bobby, remind us the troop again. 259? Troop 259. Thank you so much for, for coming. And Bobby also has an older sister who's an amazing young girl, Tori Shaw, and I couldn't go without recognizing Tori also. Thank you all. Uh, with that, we will uh, move to item 4A on the agenda. Oh, actually, Mr. Gould, did you receive uh, both... Um, the minutes for both meetings, April 18th and 25th. So moved. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Item 4A on the agenda, the clerk will read the notice. Notice is hereby given that the City Council of the City of Peabody acting as a special permit granting authority will conduct a public hearing on Thursday evening, May 9, 2019. At 7.30 p.m. in the Franco Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, Mass. On the application from, from, from Bahiv's Kumar, Patel, 65 Central Street, PVD Mass, for a special permit to allow for the retail sales of tobacco products and, re and re related accessories at 118 Central Street, PVD Mass, as filed in accordance with sections 4.2.5, 6.1, and 15.7 of the PVD Zoning Ordinance. PVD City Council, Councilor John G. Turco, City Council President. Thank you, and if you could read your name and address for the record. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and members of the City Council. My name is John Kelty. I'm an attorney. I practice law at 40 Lowell Street in Peabody, Massachusetts. I'm here representing Bavesh Kumar Patel. Hey, isn't that pretty good? <laughs> uh, uh, who has uh, business at 65 Central, uh, who resides at 65 Central Street, uh, unit number two in Peabody, Massachusetts. Uh, he is interested in opening a smoke shop uh, at uh, address of 118 Central Street in Peabody, Mass. Uh, it is located in a zoning district, which is BN. Uh, BN requires a special permit to issue for uh, a smoke shop of this nature. Um, they uh, also own uh, and operate the business at 116 Central Street, which is Town Variety. And uh, they are, um, uh, the parking that would be necessary for the property at 118, a property immediately adjacent, can be had at 116. So um, we're here seeking a special permit. Uh, we want the permit, if it is so granted this evening, uh, to issue in the name of DJ Smoke Shop. You have a correspondence from uh, the Board of Health, and the Board of Health um, has said they've already issued um, smoke permits. Uh, they're happy to see that this location is being considered and that it is here this evening for your consideration. Uh, they just would like the uh, permit to issue to DJ Smoke Shop uh, Inc. Let me just make sure that, so that their permits, uh, which have been granted uh, already, uh, would be aligned. Uh, with uh, with the permit that this city council hopefully uh, is going to uh, generate. Uh, we have asked for uh, hours of operation, which are from 9 a.m. Uh, to 9 p.m., Monday through Sunday. 
Uh, we will begin uh, as soon as this permit is granted. There's a, a limited build out in the property at uh, 118. Uh, for uh, councillors that perhaps are unfamiliar, uh, 118 is uh, formally, once again, I'll show my age. Uh, it was a pharmacy at one time, wasn't it? Yeah. And then it was a florist shop. And immediately adjacent to it in that same building uh, is, uh, was a laundromat. And uh, we're hopeful that uh, tenants will be found for uh, the laundromat. My clients this evening are actually looking at that space as well with the hope that uh, perhaps they could uh, find a good use for it. The property is owned by the Carajalas family, uh, which is Kappa Truss of Five Rotting Road in Peabody, Massachusetts. Uh, they have uh, executed the uh, uh, they have executed the um, special permit application, so they're uh, entirely aware of the fact that uh, this is being sought. Uh, and um, a special permit is required for a smoke shop that will carry uh, flavored and um, vape type products versus uh, just regular tobacco products. Uh, and the smoke shop uh, is required to be access only uh, to people uh, 21 and older. Um, that's the difference, if you will, between the convenience store they're operating and then the adjacent uh, property where they won't want to operate the smoke shop. Uh, and we're happy, my clients are both here this evening, we're happy to answer any questions that the council may have. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody in the audience here to speak in favor of this petition? Anybody here to speak in favor? Is there anybody here in the audience to speak in opposition to this petition? Seeing none, Councilor Matsoulis. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, Councilor Kelty kind of explained everything here. Uh, uh, but let me just tell you a little about that building. Uh, uh, we're we're going to have some major work done on uh, Central Street. We're all aware we're going to be spending $10 million on that road. And that building is the gateway to... Uh, uh, it's right in Wilson Square. If you're coming down 114, it's the first building you see. The building right now is empty. It's been empty for quite a while. And in my eyes, it's an eyesore. And I have been in negotiations with the, I've been in talks with the owner about possibly getting that building fixed up, hopefully in time so that when, when uh, they start the construction on, uh, on, uh, um, Central Street, you know, the, uh, they'll have that ready to go. But it's a good feeling to finally have someone in that building. As Jack said, back in the 60s and 70s and 80s, that was a drugstore, and then it converted into a laundromat. And it's been empty for the past five years or so. And uh, I think the people that are looking to rent that place are the perfect, uh, perfect people to uh, move in there because uh, Mr. Patel has been operating uh, Town Variety for a number of years right now, and I'm one of his customers. I go in there, and he runs a, a very fine operation, and I'm sure he's going to do uh, the same thing when he moves next door. And as Jack said, the only reason he's moving next door because you can't put the same product in one building, which is unfortunate, and I don't understand how they come up with these laws, but those are our laws, and we have to obey them. But uh, uh, I'm fully in support of this project, and uh, I will turn it over to the councilors if they have any questions. Councilor Gould. Thank you, Mr. President. I also go to Town Variety, and uh, you've done a remarkable job at cleaning up that store, Mr. Patel. Um, it is very clean, organized. Uh, the parking lot is very clean. You do a good job there. Uh, I have a question, Counselor, um, Attorney Kelty. Where is the front door that's going to lead into the smoke shop? Uh, is it? Central Street. Right. Where, so as you look at the current setup, there's a couple, there's a, there's a door that leads into what used to be the laundromat. Is that the door? No. Um, 
at its own door at the um, uh, more um, at the end of the building, which is uh, closer to the square and closer to the town variety. There is another door there. It used to be the door for the pharmacy, and it used to be the door. I think there was a florist shop there for a small, for a short time. As you look at the building, it's on the left side. The left, towards the town variety yes. end of the building. Yep. Okay. I wish you well, Mr. Patel. Good luck. Thank you. Council Charest. Thank you, President. I, I did have a, a couple questions. It, what is the the, the rules and regs on display in the in the windows. Uh, are they able to have the large water pipes and paraphernalia in the windows of display? Or is there a certain, uh, I know you see them in other stores. What, what yes, I think that uh, there is no regulation that uh, 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 defeats that, if you will, or, or prohibits that. Uh, but my clients are not intending to display them the same as we see the uh, uh, facilities downtown. They intend to be, uh, their product will be more uh, in the back and, you know, in the store rather than in the window. And I certainly will, you know, follow the, the guide of the, the ward counselor. I just, I just hate when you go by these stores and you see these big pipes, and certainly Central Street was spending the $10 million to improve it. Um, I hate to see that the whole front window with, with that, because there is an awful lot of children that go passing through that square. Uh, so I, I certainly hope they could take the recommendation that, that it is not displayed so easily like other, other shops. Thank, thank you. Any other councilors? Seeing none, Councilor Matsoulis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing, please. All in favor, any opposed, vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to approve special permit for uh, DJ Smoke Shop Incorporated doing business at uh, 116 Central One. Street. It says 160. Yeah, I know that. Okay. Yeah, but, but at, this will be at 118. At 118 uh, Central Street, Mr. Chairman, with the hours of operation being uh, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through uh, Sunday, right? Monday, yes. Monday through Sunday. And uh, Mr. Chairman, a special request from one counselor, and I totally agree with him, uh, uh, to not have uh, how do you describe it? Pipes displayed in the window. Uh, uh, the chair. You understand. What Council I'm Charest. Yeah. Okay. I, I guess maybe through the president to council, maybe paraphernalia. A, a paraphernalia. That's okay. Uh, um, I agree with you, Council. Not to show that paraphernalia uh, is being advertised in the window in the back and the walls. That's fine. Um, I don't think there's anything else to add. So moved, Mr. Chairman. On the motion, Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, through you to Council Marsoulis. Council Marsoulis, the health department inputs there, I think they were twofold. Um, I think one is, an, is a health department application. Um, and I guess through you to Attorney Kelty, is that, is that your understanding that's, that new application that's required is a health department application? Yes, it is. Okay, and, and the, the second point raised by the health department was the applicant must construct appropriate safeguards to ensure no entry to the store of anyone under 21 years of age. Um, is that a sure. health department regulation or is that better stipulated as a special permit condition? Oh, we would take it, it, it is a health uh, department requirement, uh, but we would certainly um, take it as a, um, a part of your conditions. Is, is that agreeable to you? Fine. Yes. Thank okay. you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Masoulis. Yep. On the motion, roll call vote. Councilor Matsoulis. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosigno. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Charest. Yes. Gould. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Turco. Yes. Motion carries 10 to nothing, one absent. Thank you, Councilors. Item 4B on the agenda, the clerk will read the notice. 
Notice is hereby given that the City Council of the City of Peabody will conduct a public hearing on Thursday evening, May 9th, 2019, at 7.30 p.m. in the Frank L. Wigan Auditorium, City Hall 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, Mass., on the application from Grecian Diner and Tavern, Inc., 136 Newbury Street, Peabody, Mass., requesting an entertainment license for the use of non-live entertainment, specifically television, CD player, DVD player, radio, and digital internet jukebox and live entertainment, specifically DJ and live entertainment in the form of live music at said 136 Newbury Street, PBD Mass, PBD City Council. Councilor John G. Turco, City Council President. Sir, could you please state your name and address for the record and tell us why you're here. You could press the uh, button one time. There okay. you go, thank you. Okay, my name is uh, Peter Michalakis. I'm the owner of a Grecian Diner, 136 Numeric Street, Peabody, Mass. I am here to request uh, a permission to offer live music occasionally in our establishment. We are open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Occasionally, uh, we are thinking of offering live music. We are open Thursday through Sunday evening, and uh, I would like to ask permission to be able to do so. Thank you very much, sir. You could press that button to shut it off. Is there anybody here in the audience to speak in favor of this petition? Come right up, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. Kevin Raish, I live at 41 Pine Street, Lot 47, Peabody, Mass. I've been a resident for 32 years, and uh, I have dinner there frequently and I think it'd be a good addition to the neighborhood and they've been very good people to me. I'm a former board member of the Massachusetts Motorcycle Association and they've let me have meetings there, district meetings, so for no charge at all and they've been very good to me. So I think they'd be, they're very good neighbors, they're very good people and I think they'd be a very good thing. And I know they're asking for, for twice a month but I'd like to see it once a week <laughs> to go out to dinner with my, with my wife and enjoy music. Thank you very much, sir. All right, thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience here to speak in favor of this petition? Anybody in the audience to speak in opposition? Is there anybody here to speak in opposition? Seeing none, Councilor Saslow. Thank you, Council President. Um, I had the opportunity to meet with Peter and his uh, sister a couple weeks ago uh, to go over the application, and um, we, had a, we had a really nice meeting. You know, I did get some calls, there were some concerns from some neighbors in the area. Um, so just to let you know where this is, this is the strip mall that is right behind the Gators uh, Gulf gas station on Route 1 uh, South that's going under the renovation right now. And um, that, that strip mall, you know, quite frankly, has had some challenges. There's been, uh, there was a Chinese restaurant, there was a sushi restaurant, uh, there was something else that was there. So in the, in the space that Peter's occupying, um, there have been some challenges, and so he's trying to make it a go and make a business be successful. And as I tried to explain to the neighbors, is that fine balance between, you know, helping a business be successful and also having them be a good neighbor in the neighborhood itself. Um, I think we have reached a good, a good um, point where uh, we've talked about some conditions that we're going to put in place that they've agreed to. It also uh, protects the neighbors, and um, as the previous speaker said, I have no, uh, I have no problem expanding the entertainment uh, once we see how uh, things start off. Um, obviously, they do abut a residential neighborhood. Literally, right behind them is, is is homes. And as I explained to Peter and his sister, you know they've had good neighbors and they've had bad neighbors. And so hopefully, I expect Peter to be a good neighbor, and there will not be any is any issues. As far as um, the license itself, I'm going to put. Uh, we've agreed to four conditions on the license. Uh, actually, I think there's five. Um, the hours of non-live entertainment. Uh, it says 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Just so you know, Peter, I think you want to have that non-live entertainment, which is the radio and the TV, to be able to go to 12.30 a.m. at night. In other words, you wouldn't want to shut the TV off at 8 p.m. So, if I, so I'm going to, I'm going to make it from 6 a.m. to 12.30 uh, p.m. a.m., excuse me, on non hours of non-live entertainment. The hours of live entertainment will be from 
I'm not going to say 8 p.m. You might want to start at 7 p.m. I'm more concerned about the end date. So uh, live entertainment will, uh, will cease at midnight. Other conditions we agreed upon is a maximum of a three-piece band with one vocalist. As I said, all live entertainment to stop at midnight. All doors are to remain shut while live entertainment is taking place. That'd be back doors or front doors. And then live entertainment will be allowed a maximum of two nights per, excuse me, of two nights per month. It may only be held on a Friday or Saturday night. So I think I'm comfortable with that. I did speak to the neighbors who were concerned. They're comfortable with that. I think Peter's been more than, um, uh, more than reasonable. As I said to him, you know, there have been other establishments on Route 1 that have had entertainment, you know, on the weekends, maybe every Saturday night or every Friday night. And uh, if that's something he's looking to do that will help his business be successful, I'd like to see us get to this point. But I just think we have to kind of, kind of, kind of crawl, walk, run. So we're going to go at that pace. And then in six months or so, things are going well, and we'd like to in increase entertainment. Um, and there's no issues in the neighborhood. I have more than happy to be supporting that. And by the way, just as a plug, he's got really good home fries. I'm all well, set. you're all welcome. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Council Matsoulis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, Peter, <clears throat> I'm the ward councilor downtown. Forgive me for not knowing about your place. Uh, uh, are we talking, uh, is it a Greek restaurant? What? Yes, it's a combination. <clears throat> We offer some Greek specialty dishes. Oh, okay. Right. We also offer traditional American cuisine, right. breakfast, lunch, dinner. So I hope we'll be able to uh, have you all. Well, uh, that, that's good to know. I look for Greek sure. places. Sure. Um, and the type of music you're looking, is it Greek music or yes. you're looking? Yes, primarily it will be Greek music right. once in a while. Right. Just to offer to the Greek American community, the Americans as well, to right. enjoy it. And uh, it will be a very low-key one vocalist. Uh, we have a relative who happens to be a lawyer and also sees things right. very nicely. So once in a while, we are thinking of bringing her over and a uh, couple of local people to right. support her and have a, a live event. Oh, that's nice to know. I, uh, I'm always looking for a Greek place okay. to go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other counselors? Seeing none, Councilor Sash Law. I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, make a motion to, appro uh, to approve the application from the Grecian Diner and Tavern Incorporated, 136 Newberry Street, Peabody, Mass, requesting an entertainment license for the use of non-live entertainment, specifically television, CD player, DVD player, radio, and digital internet jukebox and live entertainment but specifically DJ and live entertainment in the form of live music at said 136 Newberry Street. Um, Peter, we didn't really talk about the DJ. Did you have plans on using a DJ? I think it was more... Occasionally we may be. I'm not quite sure yet, but uh, I think it's a good idea to have the option. I'm not sure if we will get to that. Though. That's fine. Um, I will, we'll keep it and I just want to make sure. Okay. Uh, and, um, and under the following special conditions, um, live entertainment uh, must uh, live entertainment will end at midnight. Yes. Uh, Three-piece band and one vocalist is the maximum for the band. Yeah. Uh, all live. Uh, excuse me. Uh, all doors to remain shut while live entertainment is taking place. That'll be both back and front doors. Live entertainment will be allowed a maximum of two nights per month. It may only be held on a Friday. A Saturday night, and lastly, just as an amendment to the uh, application here, the non-live entertainment will will be able to go until 12:30 a.m. So move. On the motion, roll call vote. Councilors Matsoulis. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Charis. School. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Turco. Yes. Motion carries 10 to nothing, one absent. Thank you very much. You're very welcome to try us. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be there tonight.
Right. <laughs> I'd like to move to item five on the agenda, reports of committees. And the ad hoc committee on golf course, the ad hoc golf course committee with the counselor from downtown, Peter McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> the ad hoc committee on the municipal golf course and skating rink met on May 7th. Present for the committee were Councilors Rosignol, Melville, and myself as chairperson. Also present was Councilor O'Neill. Also in attendance were Peter Croden, the clubhouse manager, Jean Quigley, the assistant clubhouse manager, Eric Still, the golf superintendent, Glenn Pergamo, assistant golf superintendent, um, Jen Davis, director of parks and recreation, forestry, and Mike Jingris, director of finance and administration. Uh, there was a single agenda item, which was the presentation of an operational review of the golf course conducted by Niblick Golf. The presentation was made by Tim Gordon of Niblick Golf. Mr. Gordon has 40 years of experience in the business and has evaluated over 100 golf courses, primarily in New England. A competitive analysis was conducted and found that the meadow performs well versus the competition uh, and is at or near capacity without major discounting or membership programs. An operational review found that uh, first, there is strong correlation between golf playable hours and the number of rounds played annually. This correlation supports that when the number of rounds annually are down, it is truly a function of the weather and not a softening of demand for PBD's municipal course. The rate strategy was found to be correct. It is believed that offering memberships would be dilutive to financial performance. Revenues from greens, fees, and carts are strong. Uh, department expenses, uh, both clubhouse and grounds, are in line with expectations. The matter with PVD is consistently driving an EBITDA, um, earnings before income, taxes depreciation and amortization in excess of 30%, which is considered an excellent financial performance uh, for a golf course. Retirement of the bond debt uh, after fiscal year 20 will be a major milestone. In fiscal 21 and beyond, the operation should be able to self-fund future capital expenses. Committee discussion regarding the findings focused on future capital needs of the course. The consensus of the committee, as supported by comments from the golf course staff and the director of finance, was that the clubhouse and course can wait until after the bond debt is retired to address any capital needs without having an adverse effect on operations. Various short-term course innovations under consideration were mentioned by Mr. Cronin. These include potential changes to golf carts that add more technology as the next cart lease is negotiated. The tech, these technologies include GPS and potentially other entertainment features as well as the ability to regulate carts to keep them off uh, keep them on the cart paths, I should say, in wet conditions. Also, the course is experimenting with fling golf, which is a lacrosse-like game that has appealed to younger people. Various means uh, the course is currently utilized to interact with area schools was highlighted. The idea of expanding this to possible internships related to plant science and or turf grass management, which is an integral part of uh, the golf course manage, uh, management are under consideration. Uh, Mr. Gingras confirmed that given the limited available funds through fiscal year 20, apital, any capital planning for future years, for example, cart path improvements, irrigation system upgrades, et cetera, uh, or changes to the clubhouse should be addressed with in-house staff, and the committee encouraged that direction. Uh, there were no motions. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. We can move to our Legal Affairs Committee, also with Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. The Legal Affairs Committee met on uh, May 9th, earlier this evening. Uh, present for the committee were Councilors Gould, Gravel, Melville, O'Neill, and myself as chairperson. Also present were Councilor Turco, Councilor Charis, and Councilor Rosignol. There were two items on the agenda. The first was a matter uh, of an application from Andrew Casalana, 82 Birch Street, regarding, regard, regarding a request to purchase city-owned land at 0 Birch Street, map 4, lot 51A. Uh, there were a number of late communications that were received, uh, as well as one, one uh, item from tonight's package, uh, 
uh, which pertain to this matter. Uh, the first was a recommendation from community development to, uh, to sell the property. Uh, another one indicated that another party is interested in the acquisition of this property. There were two additional uh, department and or PMLP inputs on this matter, both supportive of selling the property. Uh, and there was uh, information from the assessor's office and the treasurer's office uh, that raised some questions about the status of the property uh, at the Registry of Deeds. Uh, based on the information that we had before us, uh, it was discussed and the following motion was made by Councilor Gould, moved to refer to the city solicitor that the request uh, to request a legal opinion to clarify ownership of the property known as 82R Bird Street Map 4, Parcel 51A, as to whether the city has clear title to the property, which is subject to an application for the sale of the city-owned land. So moved. On the motion. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as the information before us was further analyzed, uh, Councilor Rosignol noticed that there was some discrepancies in the lot reference, which led to a second motion by committee member Councilor Melville, uh, and the motion was to move to send the request for city-owned land back to the city departments for comment and clarification on 82R Bird Street Map 4, Parcel 51A, so moved. On well, the motion. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Move to the Finance Committee. Nope. Uh, one more. One more. My apologies. So you have a yes. You had a second discussion. We Thank did, you. Mr. President. So item B on the agenda was the easement request from Peabody Living LLC, 234 Bartholomew Street. Uh, that matter was represented before us uh, by Attorney Kelty. Uh, there was some background information provided by Attorney Kelty. Uh, and as to why this action is recommended. Uh, there was also some inf background information uh, presented by Councilor Turco uh, as this uh, is in Ward 1. And uh, after reviewing the information that was before us, there was a motion made by Councilor Gould that moved that the city accept the grant of easement and authorize the mayor to execute any and all documents necessary to complete the transaction, so moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Thank you, Mr. President. We move forward to the Finance Committee with the Honorable Councilor Gravel. Thank you, Council President. The, uh, this evening there was a meeting of the Finance Committee, uh, sitting on behalf of the committee where myself as chair, Councilor Gould, Councilor McGinn, Councilor Rosignol, and acting in place of Councilor Manning Martin was Councilor Melville. All other councilors were present and available for discussion. Uh, the topic on the uh, agenda was a request that was made by Council President Turco to have the uh, finance director and or the mayor come before us and give us sort of a status update on the budget process and where we were. Um, the finance director, as well as the man, provided uh, information to the committee regarding uh, certain issues of uh, projected overrun in the existing budget, as well as projected increases for the, uh, the coming fiscal year. Um, he indicated they're making all efforts available to uh, see if they can uh, shorten the amount of increase being requested, as well as address some of the shortfalls. Um, there were no motions in the committee at the time. We did request that, um, that we get a status of appropriations from the budget director, uh, the finance director, excuse me, uh, as it pertained to where we stood at the end of June. So that should be arriving to us either June 2nd or 3rd. I did ask that it be uh, presented. I hope uh, he's listening again, that we get it in an Excel format so that we can work with it versus paper, which is, um, kind of difficult to work with uh, when it comes to that report. Um, and it was also agreed that uh, uh, the council is willing, ready, ready, willing, and able to uh, meet on numerous occasions to go line by line, detail by detail, to help uh, uh, make a, a good and fair budget judgment um, in plenty of time for the fiscal year end. Report of progress. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you, Councillor. And item six, motions, orders, and resolutions. Councillor Matsoulis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have no motions, but under suspension of the rules, I'd like to go to item uh, 8D, motion to receive and set up a public hearing. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. And also, I'd like to go to item 9C, uh, and that's a banner request from St. Vasilius Church, motion to receive and approve. Thank you. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. That's Co it. Council Melville. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Under suspension of the rules, I move to receive item 8B. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Uh, under suspensions of the rules, I move to receive item 8E. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. And I have no further motions tonight, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor O'Neill. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, no motions tonight. Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Under suspension of the rules, move to receive item 8C. So moved. All in favor, any opposed, the vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Under suspension of the rules, move to receive item 8F and set up a public hearing. So moved. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Thank you, Mr. President. We took this up at, um, at Legal Affairs earlier, but just as a technicality, um, move to receive item 8J and refer to this matter in Legal Affairs, so moved. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Councils have on the desk tonight a, a late um, communication from His Honor the Mayor dated May 8th, 2019. Uh, move to receive and refer to legal affairs, so moved. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Um, thank you, Mr. President, on that motion. Uh, this one's time sensitive. Uh, I spoke to the members of the committee um, and we are going to plan for a legal affairs meeting on May 16th at 5.30. Point of information. Uh, Mr. President, I would uh, move to request that the director of the health department attend the next meeting of the Industrial and Community Development Committee to um, provide an update on the proposed ordinance re regarding rodent control. So moved. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed to vote? Councillor Gould, we're, we're good with that uh, for your committee. Yes, thank you, Mr. Ch uh, Mr. President. Um, Tim, we have a couple of industrial, uh, we have one anyway. Two, one. Two, we have two scheduled, so we'll put that on the least busy agenda for the next, or the, the night that we are scheduled. Thank you. Council again. Thank you, Councilor Gould. Um, thank you, Council President. No further motions. Council Rosignol. Thank you, Mr. President. No motions at this time. Council Saslow. Thank you, Council President. Just a clarification. Um, did Council McGinn receive 8C? Was that correct? Yes, he did. And so, um, just curious how we're going to proceed with that. I think they were looking for responses on that. Thank you, Council. I was going to address that. Um, I think, as in, in my position as, as president of the council, maybe I'll, I'll send an email. But I, I do, um, I will send an email with some ideas. And if um, I actually don't know the right procedure for that, if councils could share their thoughts with me, or if that would be a violation, hmm. um, maybe maybe I will send it with my own thoughts and under my own name and. The clerk informs you that maybe we should do that publicly, so we should find a committee to refer that to. Um, and I did speak briefly with Council McGinn, and that was the problem we were trying to come up with, is what committee that would be best suited for. Um, and for those that don't know, that's, that was the motion to have the planning board televised, um, and they would like a suggestion from us and an answer as to why we would like it televised. And 
um, they feel more comfortable in their room downstairs. Um, so I would like to address that and inform them why we would like it televised. Council Sassler. I'm, I'm hearing some chatter about legal, and, and, and that's fine. I, I was just going to suggest, why can't we just put it as an item on the agenda and just discuss as a committee of, of the whole, rather than put it in, the, in a subcommittee? I don't know if that, um, you know, you know I, I will say for the record, it disappoints me. I think we've been clear. I think you've been clear. I think I've been clear. Um, in the interest of transparency, um, I think the letter, I was a little bit disappointed in it. It's just, once again, kicking the ball down the court. But I know me and you, uh, me and you, Council President, are in agreement on this issue, as I said, but I, I am a little disappointed. I mean, at some point, I think, you know, without getting specific on projects and the reasons why, um, we can do that. But as I said, I just, I'm disappointed that they're still kicking the ball down the court. I think it's in the interest of transparency. Um, this is a great room. There's no reason. Um, we've also included technology up here more than it's ever been. So uh, I, I'm a little frustrated, as you can tell, but uh, I'll yield the floor and then go back to motions and resolutions when I'm done. Councilor Gravel. Well, really, I don't even think you have to put it into a subcommittee. You, you, you've just discussed it. Um, for the issues of transparency, if you would have, the, you know, the city clerk draft a letter on behalf of the city council, saying that at its meeting, the city council discussed the issue associated with asking the planning board to move their location to a televised uh, environment so that all citizens be, be privileged to know and understand what's happening in their at their planning board as well as counselors. Um, I think that's sufficient reasoning, and uh, that's the letter that, that, that would be done, and you'd be done with it tonight. Council Rosignol. I, I completely agree with Councilor Gravel. I would just like to see that in the form of a motion so that we can all vote on this to show solidarity in, in wanting them to be in a public body. Yeah, we we'll make it in the form of a motion, yeah. Okay, uh, we will make that in the form of a motion. Before you uh, say that, Councilor, Councilor um, Sasslaw kind of got me going here because I couldn't agree with you more, Council. It's been two years that we've asked for this, and this is just a matter of transparency in government. And we all, um, we've heard it, we've seen it. We, you know, politicians get kicked all the time because we're not transparent enough, and that's all we're trying to do here is make it transparent. We're not trying to inconvenience the planning board or or anything other than. Um, show the people of Peabody that everything we do here is on the up and up and they have the same information that we as a council have. So add that to the letter if you will, but I share your frustration, council, so much you have no idea. Um, on the motion, uh, any, anything further on the motion, council? Uh, no, I think that I, I understand your frustration and this is probably the quickest and easiest way of disposing of it, so let's just do it. So moved. On the motion, I'm gonna take a roll call on that motion. Councilors Matsoulis. Yes. Melville. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Charest. Yes. School. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Turco. Yes. Motion carries 10 to nothing with Napson. Thank you, Council President. <laughs> Thank you. And, and you have some items to receive, yes. uh, Under Council. Under suspension rules, uh, motion to receive item 8H and approve all papers being in order. So move. On the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. So under suspension rules, uh, motion received, item 8I, um, and that will, uh, that will also be, uh, we'll receive it and then put in people's packet when we have the special permit hearing uh, for that uh, address of 41 Newberry Street. So move. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Further motions or orders, thank you. Council, while I have you, you want to take item 10A uh, out of order? Sure. Uh, ready for council adoption, um, 10A. Disappeared on me. So, thank you. Uh, motion to uh, adopt uh, 
on the uh, parking pro 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 prohibition on the certain streets, um, section 19-94, parking is hereby prohibited upon the following streets or highways or parts thereof, except as may otherwise be promoted by this, by this article, by inserting the following, and that would be Lakeland Park Drive, <coughs> both sides for its entire length, uh, section two, all ordinances or parts of ordinances inconsistent herewith are hereby repealed. Section three, this ordinance shall take effect as provided by law. Uh, introduced on April 18th, published April 18th, published, excuse me, introduced April 18th, order published April 18th, published May 2nd, and adopted this evening. So move. On the motion, all in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. All set. Thank you, Council President. Council, could I bother you one more time? Did you no. want to make a motion to have public services install the signage for that motion? Yes, yeah. please make a motion. Public services uh, put the signages on both sides of the street, parking prohibitive. Thank you. Appreciate that suggestion. Thank you, Councilor Charest. Thank you, Council President. I'd like to make a motion to ask for Captain Richards to give us the opinion on the no parking signs on Irving Street by the Center School. I know there's signs up there now uh, attached to trees. Um, I don't believe it is um, uh, properly placed, and the school and the police department would like to be able to enforce it if it's legit. So um, on what it needs to be done, in their opinion, on that um, no parking on one side of Irving Street by the center school. So move. All in favor, any opposed to vote? Uh, just like a little update uh, from council, uh, the clerk's office on the sign for the Fred Berry uh, on the chamber. If you, you have any uh, update on that, I know we, we, we talked about some time ago, but. I don't have any update as of yet, Councillor. So. Could we uh, work <laughs> on finding when that can be placed, please? Yep. Thank you. Um, just another point of information, the, uh, the circus will be wrapping up relatively soon within the next few days. I certainly will be participating as Mark Whiting indicated with the time he was here to have a, a meeting of um, uh, the people of interest, uh, the pros and cons of um, the operation. Um, when the day comes, I'm, I'm certainly would ask him to all send it out to all the counselors, but, uh, and I will be giving a report on, on that. Up to this point, I have actually received no complaints. I have received some concerns since it's opened. Uh, some of those concerns I uh, addressed with the circus and they took immediate response to it. I have speak, spoken to uh, all the departments within the city. Uh, they couldn't be even happier with uh, how they performed and what they've done uh, with, their, um, with their circus. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that it, it, it ends very well and I'll give a report uh, after at the next meeting. So move. Not even a motion, so just point of information. Thank you, Council. Council Gould. I, I'm not done, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Council Charest. You still, we have to be at the Grecian Diner in 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> 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 the, uh, I'd like to make a motion to ask Captain Richards the, uh, for an update. I, I made this motion a while ago, but I know everybody's been very busy. Uh, on the stop line on Lowell Street, underneath the, well, by the 128 overpass. So if you're coming down 128 southbound, you're going to take a left onto Lowell Street. You have a one lane. Um, that comes down on Lowell Street going east, but there's a white line that indicates when I went to school to stop. What happening is people coming down to the left, on that left lane, continuing going all the way down underneath the bridge and taking a left onto 128 north. But if you're coming down and off that ramp, I'm sure most people have taken it, that it, it, it's, it's quite dangerous, and I know I've been nearly hit, and the cars are just zipping down there. Last time I s spoke, we weren't sure if that white line 
did mean that it must come to a stop, but there's going to be there's going to be an accident there, a severe accident. So asking Captain Richards to get back to us uh, on the recommendation and what they can do to enforce that, and if it is a legal stop. So move. On the motion, all in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. And just one more. That is all. Thank you. Very good. Councillor Gould. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to make a co-motion with Councillor Sharis to replace the two sodium streetlights on the access road that runs from Foster Forest Street to the Center School as a matter of safety. It's pretty dark up there. Two new LED lights would help. So moved. I'm sorry, I, I, did you say the PMLP was the, the motion, or the street lights, or to, where is that going, the motion? I missed um, it. I'm sorry, PMLP. Thank yes. you, on the motion. Yes. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. No further motions. Councilor, uh, I think there's two items that involve you and your committee on here, 8A and HE, if you want to take those. 8A, uh, oh, 8A may be going to... Um, your committee uh, or motion to receive and uh, schedule in the industrial community development item 8a so moved on a motion all in favor any opposed it's a vote and 8g also 8g um, that's actually going to go to council of sas laws municipal safety uh, subcommittee uh, that you assigned us council of sas law has come up with some recommendations and i'd like to receive that letter and schedule uh, at your convenience in a municipal safety meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. On the motion, all in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Councillor Gravel. Uh, thank you, Council President. Uh, under suspension of rules, move to receive item 7A and send it to the Finance Committee. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Under suspension of rules, I'd like to receive item 7B and have it placed in the Finance Committee. All in favor, any opposed to vote? On the suspension of rules, I'd like to receive item 7C and refer it to the Finance Committee. All in favor, any opposed to vote? And uh, just by way of update, I, I want to apologize to you and the other councils. I won't be available from May 15th to June 2nd due to travel. Um, but uh, I will, as soon as I get back, make sure that we schedule the budget meetings as quick as possible. And I'd also like to make uh, one additional comment. I'd like, because I know she's probably watching the meetings, she watches them all the time, but our good friend Mary Bellavance has been ill and uh, got good news today. She's on the, the road to mend um, and recovery, so I uh, want to wish her well and let her know that we're all thinking of her and uh, hoping for all great things. Thank you. Thank you, Councilors. And Councilor Melville, you want to take items 9A and B? Mr. President, uh, under, well, I don't think it's suspension of the rules at this point, but uh, move to, to approve item uh, 9, you said 9A, 9B? Item 9A, junk dealer's license, two, not, 2019 renewal, K Jewels Inc., 210 Andover Street. Move to approve with all papers being in order. All in favor, any opposed to vote? Move to approve the taxi and limousine driver license, Stephen Plunkett, license three. Move to approve with all papers being in order, so moved. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. And very quickly, uh, just for um, your information, last or earlier this week, um, we did have a neighborhood meeting regarding the Michaels Lim limousine uh, in Salt, Salt Tower location. Uh, Councilor Gould, uh, the mayor, uh, so, uh, school committee member Hawkman and myself were there as elected officials. I'm quite sure most of you would have been there, but I know there were some other meetings that night, so um, I understand that. The, the meeting was held at uh, John Swanson's house, who was a resident that abuts the property. Um, over 120 people attended, uh, between 100 and 120 people attended. 
And the mayor was nice enough to uh, recess his school budget hearing so that he could attend and give a synopsis of the saga that's taken place from 2014 to today. Um, he also reiterate, reiterated to the residents that we as a council and we as a city continue to fight uh, this location as we all feel that it um, is not the best location to put a cell tower in the middle of a residential neighborhood. He informed the residents of the city appeal of the land court decision, stated that that appeal may take up to six months, and he's hopeful that in the meantime, the PBD municipal light plant um, would be able to help us with a resolution through the installation of DAS antennas. Uh, on, cell, on telephone poles throughout the city. That's a very brief, but for those that couldn't attend um, and that are watching on TV, I just wanted to give you a, a brief synopsis and I'm available uh, to answer any questions and my telephone number is listed on the city website. Thank you, can I get a motion to adjourn? On well, the motion, all in favor, any opposed, have a good evening. <laughs>